Hi, in this video we're going to look deeper into our kinematics equations for constant acceleration. We're going to apply them to some practical problems. Up till now we've only looked at problems such as you might find in a typical textbook or on a worksheet. And those are good. You should do as many of them as you can in your study time. But you can become very good at doing textbook type problems without actually understanding the physics very well. That's because textbook problems usually give you the information you need to solve the problem. They tell you what values you use or they give you enough information to determine those values. And also they don't give you anything which isn't relevant to the problem typically. But in the real world that doesn't happen. Nobody tells you what values to use, nobody tells you what to measure. You have to figure that out for yourself. And to do that you need to understand the physics. So we're going to look at one example problem here and use that as a prelude to you doing some of your own in class. So let's begin. Here's our problem. We have a toy car and we're going to let the car roll down a slope until it comes to a stop. And what we want to do is determine the speed of the car as it passes the block with the arrow on it right there. So the car is constantly changing speed as it moves down the track. We want to know its instantaneous velocity at that point. Well, velocity is a kinematics quantity. Perhaps we can solve this problem using one of our kinematics equations. We're looking for the velocity at the marked point. But these are kinematics equations for constant acceleration. And our car is not undergoing constant acceleration. As our car goes down the slope, it's speeding up, and we can assume at a fairly constant rate. But once it hits the horizontal surface, it begins to slow down. Again, we can assume at a constant rate, but that's a different acceleration from when it was on the slope. And in this little changeover area here where it changes direction, the acceleration will be changing the whole time. So this car is not undergoing constant acceleration. In order to use our kinematics equations, we have to first of all identify a period of motion where the acceleration is constant, where it changes speed at a constant rate. And of course, that part of, our, that part of the motion has to include the point of interest, the area where we want to find the velocity of the car. Well, there are two periods where the acceleration is fairly constant, when it's coming down the slope and when it's sliding across the horizontal tabletop. Our point of interest is on the horizontal tabletop, so the slope is actually of no value to us. But there's another thing we need to consider here too. The v's in our kinematics equations are initial and final velocity. They deal with the velocity at the beginning of a period of motion or at the end of a period of motion, not in the middle. So we need to further refine our period of motion so that our marked point is either the beginning or the end of the motion. So perhaps we could deal with the section from where it first reaches the tabletop to where it reaches our marked point, in which case we're looking for the final velocity of that motion. Or we could look at the motion from that point onwards, from where it passes the block until the car comes to a stop, in which case we're looking for the initial velocity. Which one should we use? Well, remember, in order to use a kinematics equation, I need to know three other things about that motion. I have to be able to measure them or otherwise determine them. Um, and if you explore, you'll find the easiest one to use is the motion from the marked point to where the car stops, because I can find what I need to know. I'm interested in the velocity at that point. I can time how long the car takes to get from that point to where it stops. I can measure the displacement of the car, how far it travels from the marked point to where it stops. And I need one other bit of information while well, the car came to a stop. So its final velocity for that period of motion is zero. There's my three other quantities. I can use the kinematics equation that relates them to solve the problem. So let's do that very quickly. I measured the time interval and it was about 1.88 seconds. The distance the car traveled, its displacement from the marked point to where it stopped was about 1.05 meters. It came to a stop, so our final velocity is zero, and we're interested in the velocity at the beginning of that motion. 
the kinematics equation that relates those is this one. So if I rearrange that to give me the initial velocity, it's going to be 2 times the displacement divided by the time interval minus the final velocity. Plug in my values, that's 2 times 1.05 meters divided by 1.88 seconds minus 0 gives me an initial velocity of approximately 1.12 meters per second. So there's our final solution. The car was traveling at about 1.12 meters per second when it passed the marked point. Problem solved. That's good. I know what I did. But if you handed me that problem, I would not find this a satisfactory solution. And here's why. When I give this problem to students in class, many students do it incorrectly. For example, many students measure the total distance that the car traveled. Well, that doesn't work because number one, the acceleration is not constant over that distance. And the point we're interested in is not the beginning or the end of that motion. Some students measure from where the car started to our point of interest. And they say initial velocity is zero and we're looking for the final velocity and they measure that distance and the time taken to travel there, which seems reasonable, except once again, the acceleration is not constant over that distance. So that's not valid. My point is many people approaching problems like this do them incorrectly and I need to know that you have done it correctly. So it's not enough for you to tell me displacement is 1.05 meters. You have to make it clear to me what distance exactly you measured. How do you do that? Well, you can do that one of two ways. You can state it in words. Instead of saying D equals, why not say the displacement from the marked point to where the car stops? is zero, no sorry, not zero, 1.05 meters. And it's perfectly, perfectly clear to the person reading your work what you measured. Another way of doing that is to sketch and mark up a diagram. So why not draw a quick sketch of the track? Here's my marked point. Here's where my car stopped. And say, here's my displacement that I measured. Do you see the point here? You need to make it clear to the person reading your work exactly what you measured. To say displacement equals isn't good enough if they don't know how you did the work because there are many different distances you could have measured. And in my experience, many people measure the wrong distances when they're solving problems like this. So you need to make it clear to your reader exactly what you're doing. So there we go. There's an example of a practical problem. You need to identify a period of motion where the rate at which the velocity changes, the acceleration remains constant, and that includes the point of interest, the thing you want to work out. And you need to be able to find three other kinematics quantities that deal with that same period of motion. Hopefully you understood that. Next time we meet in class, you'll get a chance to try some of your own.